everyone so sometimes you just need somebody who tells you that you should be doing something differently or maybe you should try something else or you should maybe switch to plan b and that is the same thing that happened to me so when i was still in my undergraduate studies at asylum university uh, as some of you already know that i was doing my undergraduate studies from asylum university from india uh, along um, during the time of second year i started preparing for gre and toefl and as i was already working in a laboratory there it was a wonderful experience but at the same time i think i didn't learn how to allocate enough time for gre so i didn't score that well in my gre but the toefl scores were pretty fine so what happened is that the there were few mistakes that i made when i wanted to apply for a direct phd position so my aim was to apply for direct phd position and that was transitioning from a background in molecular neurosciences and immunology and endocrinology to a brain imaging a neuroscience phd so this is um how would i put it is that basically this is number one mistake that i made was that i was trying to transition from two different fields so from biotechnology to neuroscience which is still all right but i had no background in brain imaging so maybe if i would have had experienced uh, something like an internship or something that would have boosted my application point number 2 is that uh, i applied to mostly the ivy league colleges so you won't believe but i had 10 to 11 rejections and at that point of time i didn't know and i thought maybe i will have a gap year but luckily one of my professor noticed the mistake that i was doing and he told me that you know you should have plan b which means that you should apply for masters in neuroscience and then uh, maybe you can apply for a phd in neurosciences and this is what i did so then i applied i applied for uh, three masters program so one was in berlin in hamburg university other one was university of freiburg so that's in germany and the third one was joint masters in neurosciences so which comprises of three universities university of strasbourg university of freiburg and university of basel so in three countries france germany and switzerland so i got through uh, two of these masters and luckily i didn't have to waste one of my year and so i just got through this masters program um, and this was part of plan b and not plan a so Uh, all the universities that i applied to initially so for the first round of all the direct phd applications all of those got rejected so from all this i learned that uh, the mistakes that i was doing so the next time uh, when i was in my masters and i knew definitely that i wanted to get into a phd in neurosciences i started applying after completion of my first years of masters so that was in 2017 and in order to get Uh, to this particular phd position it took me almost one year because i was applying to different uh, phd positions also and um, my aim initially was to do my master thesis from a university and from a laboratory from where i could continue as a phd student but life has other plans for you uh, in fact uh, i would like to share with you that i got through um, university of geneva's uh, laboratory and they accepted accepted me for doing masters in their laboratory but uh, at that point of time i had two scholarships but i knew that they would be sufficient to cover my expenses in sweden but not in switzerland so i ended up doing my master thesis in sweden and at that point of time i thought maybe i would continue there as a phd student but it didn't happen because the professor over there didn't have a phd position at that point of time and maybe he was looking for somebody else so i ended up having good time in my masters in sweden uh, and luckily got uh, through this project and this is what something i learned so the mistakes that i committed during my um, undergraduate study from the transition from there uh, to my masters was that you know i didn't have a background in brain imaging and i wanted to get into brain imaging so this time when i was doing my masters i decided that i would do my um, master thesis in brain imaging and that was so helpful because then that formed the basis for my phd which is now in brain imaging and i was just delighted that i just didn't take those rejections as just rejections but took that as a redirection 
So this is something that I want to share with you is that in academia, you will always have a lot of competition and it's not just competition with others, but you're also competing with your own self. So um, once you apply for an undergraduate study um, position, you then apply for a master's, then for a PhD, then for a postdoctorate position, probably for a second postdoctorate position, even when you're in your PhD, you apply for several grants, travel grants, you apply for different type of fundings, then also during your postdoc, you apply for fundings, and then you compete for assistant uh, professorship, associate professorship, and then full professorship, and then you're applying for grants for your students. So basically, uh, this whole field is uh, a lot about competition, a lot about, um, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty involved. So you need to know that the acceptance rate in academia is very, very, very low, and the competition is so high, and the rejection rate is pretty high. So just um, keep this in mind if you want to get into academia, start learning to accept rejections and to see from there that what you're lacking and what others are doing better at so that then you can learn from them and also at the same time learn from your own mistakes. So that's quite about it and I have a lot more to share but I would look forward to your comments so write them down in the comment section below if you have any questions we see each other in another video if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please uh, subscribe to it also if you like this video give this a thumbs up and then i see you later bye for now